Okay, hi, I'm uh, Gilion Janssen. Difficult Dutch name, so it's easier for you to call me CJ. Um, I was asked to help uh, implement and think about uh, the GDPR privacy uh, tool. Uh, I'm going to walk through the steps today. Uh, we take a look at the architecture of the Pimrim tool. Uh, we look at some visualizations uh, to talk about uh, uh, consent. And uh, at the last part, we look at uh, the tool roadmap. The architecture uh, is as follows. Uh, we have a consultant who can use a web browser or have other applications uh, who can integrate uh, at an API layer. Uh, we have a, a user interface layer uh, through which the, uh, the consultant can uh, communicate uh, with the platform. Uh, there is a persistence layer. Uh, what we've done is uh, um, store everything in a graph because uh, there are so many items related with each other. So when you look at domains, and domains can have subdomains, domains can have participants, domains can have systems, systems can be related to each other. We can have all these links between all those nodes, and when we uh, model it as a graph, we can do all things like query it uh, to, to create all kinds of visualizations. A very important part is the visualization engine. Uh, uh, how I uh, use it now is that I generated the diagrams with my own uh, uh, graph uh, uh, engine, uh, but for the tool uh, to work, uh, we can use, uh, for example, Neo4j, or you can use your own uh, enterprise uh, graph system you have in place. Uh, another part is uh, import and exporting. Um, there is a lot, of, a lot of input work you have to be, do, uh, be doing, for example, uh, the PA information that's in all the data flows. And when, we, when you've got that in repositories or you've got other tools who can uh, mine those information, uh, for example, uh, now I don't know if there is always a system in place, but you can think that you can have a, a system who sniffs all the information and flows that's run through your organization, uh, and you can import all this information uh, in this system, uh, plug it into the, to the, the graphs and do all kinds of queries on it and visualize what's going on. Another function we can uh, have is that we can say, well, hey, we've got uh, the PME tool from organization A, we've got an organization, for example, uh, uh, in the use case we've just mentioned, uh, the council. And uh, the council may have done a lot of analyzing uh, work uh, that they've got in their system. Uh, so you can uh, imagine that you can uh, import all those uh, analysis in your uh, system and you can use that in, in, in your analysis. Um, and maybe the, there are, uh, if you have a chain of companies uh, that are working together, that all these systems are linked together and you can import and export all those analysis and update those analysis uh, in the next years. Because it is not only when you look at the GDPR uh, something you have to do for now, but for all the new systems and, and all systems in 10 years and you have to know what uh, how those systems are now and over five years. And uh, yeah, we all know uh, documentation from systems uh, uh, is always of not updated or, or there isn't, uh, it's, it's in the, the head of the, the designer of the, the engineers. So it's nice to have all those kinds of things in, uh, in systems. Uh, now we're going to walk through some visualizations I've made uh, to handle uh, uh, the, the item consent. Uh, we're going to ask ourselves some questions. Consent. Uh, what to ask uh, in the in consent. Uh, so do you only have to, uh, to ask one, uh, you, uh, you filed a report and I want uh, the, uh, the, the, the item to be fixed, or do we have to ask, uh, can we use it for uh, further analysis? Can the council use it? Uh, the next question is how to store it, what we asked. Another question is when someone uh, withdraws his consent, what do we have to do? And the last one is the right uh, for uh, the right for erasure, because when we want to, or need want, when we have to erase, erase the data. 
How does it look in our systems? Because you can uh, document it on paper, but uh, the information has to be removed in all systems. And when we zoom in, uh, we can see uh, what the engineers have to do. And we go to picture one. This is uh, the domains, the top level domains. And it looks very simple. You have the domain citizen, you have the domain uh, improve the neighborhood. There are some data flows uh, running between them. Uh, the most important one is submit report. And uh, when you ask yourself the question, uh, what do we have to ask for consent? Well, it looks like we have, uh, have one checkbox and, uh, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's ready. But when we zoom in, we see that the domain uh, from the improvement neighborhood is, uh, is, uh, contains four domains, four subdomains. One is the platform itself, and the other are the four uh, council types. And the council types are uh, uh, different implementations. Uh, we go that in, a, in, a, in another slide. First, we zoom in further at the domain level. And what we see here is a citizen, and there are uh, three types of apps he can communicate with the platform. One is the website, another one is a mobile app, and he can do it by mail. And uh, uh, aside of the consent, uh, well, mail is not very uh, uh, secure. Uh, so that's an option that uh, in the GDPR we can't use, uh, or they can't use uh, 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 anymore. Then we zoom in on another level, and we also see the participants in the councils. And when we look at uh, type four, that's when the system sends an email to the council and says, well, uh, uh, person X made a report, uh, this is all the information, and you can handle it, and uh, the, the council is typing it in their own uh, back office systems uh, to take care of it. Uh, another one is that uh, uh, they have a uh, CRM system, and uh, the customer support people uh, say someone uh, calls the, the, the city and says, I want to have this fixed. They will uh, type it in, uh, it comes in the system, and uh, the, the rest is managed via a CRM online application. But it also means that all this information what's typed in here by the council also is viewed in these mobile apps. Uh, this one, type one, uh, there are three systems, also a field worker app. So when a citizen uh, makes false reports, uh, the field worker gets on his phone a message uh, to, uh, to fix it. And the last one is when the uh, council uses a case management system. And uh, this system fully automates, uh, sends a, uh, a request in their systems, and it's it, it, uh, it would further processed in, uh, in, in their systems. Then we make a further zoom. We zoom in at the internal domain. And we see that there are further domains in this system. Uh, we have uh, the core application engine, which has got an app server, an ActiveMQ manager, an, an, an enterprise service bus, a mail server. But this mail server is, uh, is uh, uh, their own mail server, which is blocked uh, uh, by all the, the large systems, uh, large email providers. So they use a postmark from an, uh, an other company, Wildbit. And this one sends the mails to, uh, for example, a citizen or the type four council. We'll see uh, the app server communicates with the uh, database server. Uh, they use uh, Arcris online from uh, Esri uh, for uh, analysis. So the system sends all this information to that domain. It's a, it's a SaaS provider. And there's a desktop application where they do all the analysis. Um, the CRM online application that some councils are using are, are from, is from another company. And they're also flowing information to uh, MailChimp. It's a newsletter system. But we're not there yet. Um, this app, the app server is running on a web server. It's also in an other domain. 
Uh, and when, when we look further, I think I have to zoom in a little bit. We see that uh, all, those all those systems are running on different machines. We have a web server, uh, we have uh, 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 database servers, multiple, we have a backup system, we have the queue manager, the enterprise <coughs> server, all running on different servers, all running on different domains. Uh, and we want to see uh, where are those different domains lo located. So we do a query on the system, on the graphs, and we... And I have to zoom in. And we can the location of all the servers. Well, this one is located in the Netherlands by the provider, but these servers are located in France. And when we do uh, an analysis, uh, yeah, the, it didn't include it in this query, but when it does for this all the domains, uh, Esri maybe has a service located in the USA. So we now see all those flows uh, in different countries, in different places, and uh, the, the first step we had from, well, it's just an, uh, uh, a report filed between two systems, it's exploded to a, lo uh, a lot of si uh, systems over here. And when we zoom in on the case management council, <laughs> we see that they also have an ESB, enterprise service bus, with different back office systems, uh, why the, uh, and also the identity of a citizen uh, is in the uh, it's called the, uh, the GBA in, the, in Holland. Every council has its own system where all the citizens' information is stored. Uh, they've got workflow engines. Uh, everyone has got a personal internet page. So when you log in to the site of the council, uh, you can see all the things you've communicated with, uh, with, uh, the, with your local council. So when, you, when you've created a, uh, a report over here, it flows through all these channels and it's going to uh, uh, get stored in here. So when we look at these simple questions, what do we have to ask consent for? It is something for all the system over here. And when you uh, ask from, uh, uh, when, when, when someone withdraws uh, the consent, you have to look to all the systems and uh, look for what data is used for what, for, for example, uh, the, the ArcGIS system, uh, where all kinds of analysis uh, uh, have been done. Uh, could you use that information again from persons? Probably not. Because uh, if, if too little, uh, uh, too little uh, persons have given consent, uh, your analysis doesn't say, uh, doesn't say something. So you have to ask yourself, well, yeah, it's, is it, is it um, uh, 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 cost effective enough to, to redesign all these things when so li little people uh, give consent uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, for using this data. And the last step, well, every engineer is going to cry now, Aris, you have to look in all those systems, all those log files, all those channels, and to look from, well, e e the citizen wants his information removed, and it has to re get removed to all these systems. Um, well, I think that, that this visualization uh, gives us a, a better uh, overview uh, to reason about this uh, with engineers, uh, with privacy uh, experts, but also between uh, different domains. Uh, and I don't think you can uh, get this level of detail if you just look at Excel sheets or draw all those uh, physio diagrams by yourself. Well, I hate uh, physio, I never used it, but when I see people sweat, uh, creating all these kind of things. And for example, you know, analysis say, wow, well, what if the ASB is changed, or what is this is changed, and you have to all draw all these lines by hand again? Well, nobody's gonna do it. Or it is a version uh, that was uh, made five months ago. So CJ, just as a quick question, uh, I just explained to the audience. It took me hours to create a very simple diagram. This is a very detailed diagram. How much time did it cost you to create this diagram based on the visualization engine? Uh, I made a uh, query, uh, and uh, the engine uh, just transforms this query uh, and draws uh, these graphs. So, for, for me, it was a press of a button. Yes, question over there. Well, that was fast, but... <laughs> 
the, the question here, and maybe it, it's an obvious one, and I apologize. When you talk about erasing, when you talk about the right to be forgotten, you can pull the data out of the individual systems. Well, what about the logs? What about the backups? Are they not going to be staying there? Yeah, yeah, and, and the backups. Okay, and when you, uh, that's why it was, uh, I think, yeah. This was, uh, uh, when you zoom in on this system, you see the, mails, uh, the, the, the database server, uh, there's an old, another machine that's taking backups from that, this machine. So you have to remove it also from this one. How do you remove it from the backups? Do you just let it play out? And how do you remove it from the logs? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm coming from the States, and I apologize. Uh -huh. we're, we're renegades. No, no, no. It, 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 this, this is exactly the kind of questions uh, nobody has thought, thought about. And when you zoom in in systems, and when you use these kinds of visualizations, you see this kind of thing, and you think, oh my god, we have to remove it from all the log files. And uh, there are, of course, uh, developers on their, on their own machines and staging environments where all those copies of, uh, of uh, 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 the live data is made. And most enterprise service buses, uh, well, especially places where I have, was a consultant, uh, uh, the developers want to see what's, what's, what went wrong. They say they turn wrong and maxim uh, maximize all, this, all those personal information is in all those kinds of log files, plain text. And uh, I think that as a policy uh, a person knows, knows about that, he get a heart attack. But they don't know it. So I, I think that that's an excellent question. And, but, but adding to this is this diagram you created as a result uh, from uh, the analysis that's currently in the tool uh, actually provides you with the insight of where is all the data, in what systems is it, and where are all those components located. Next steps would be to try and figure out how to resolve it, but the tool doesn't give you an automated answer in terms of you need to do this, this, and this in order to fix it. It gives you insight. Well, that's a good point. It gives you the visibility, much like a data flow, but I think the answer might go to what Mike had said earlier. Let's see what the court said. Yep. Yeah. But uh, you, you, I think you you, you won't uh, you you won't uh, on forehand have this this picture complete, but because when the court says uh, it has to be removed, you you can take 20 years to to fix all your systems. We will do as much as possible, and then yeah. see what happens. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. We just need someone to sacrifice in court. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's right. So my question is, when I look at this picture, you see a data flow here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the data flow could have PI data, mm -hmm. mixed data, and maybe IP data, company data. Yeah. Is it possible to split this off and make center and a drill down analysis what is what? Because I need to have special measures for PI data, whereas I don't know, I need it maybe for for uh, for only business data. Yeah, uh, what you what you see here is only PA data because uh, the, the spec the, the PIM spec says in task I think it's task. No, I don't know what I had, is that you, uh, the data flows between domains uh, are the flows uh, which contains PA. Uh, but uh, because every, every information is stored as graphs, you do queries on the graphs and say, from, give me all the data points uh, of all the data flows which contains a, a certain level of PA. Yes. So, no, so I can, can see them as a grade of mixture or as a, as a grade of, uh, of risk as well? Um, so, uh, is it possible to put a risk value on this? Maybe a privacy value or maybe a uh, Yeah, you, you, have to, you have to create a queries by yourself, of course. But it is possible because everything is, in, is stored as, as a graph. Yeah? I'll make a comment. Uh, the PIMRIM um, focus is PI. Yeah. But the methodology, if, for example, your point, or you're moving um, other data along with the PI, you could use the tool to map that as well. It just adds layers of complexity, but you could do it. The second point is, and it gets back to the earlier question, what do you do about this? Um, that gets into other aspects of the PIMRIM because this, as am I reading the presentation, is essentially focusing on the mapping, the domains, the data flows. But if you recall the PIMRIM, it moves into the privacy control requirements and someone must make a decision about that, and that's why you do the analysis. But you can see how it leads you deeply into it. So that part of it is entirely up to the, uh, the company or the decision maker as to what we want to invest in. 
You see what I'm saying? So the, the PI, in the PIMRIM, we do say, um, the, remember we talked about controls. So who sets the controls and which controls are exported to these other systems or not? And, and what are internal to these other system providers? And the, all that has to get documented. And one of the points that this is an open source project is it's complicated. So you've got to have more of the community contributing to it based on the model. And, and maybe adding to your comment and, and your su suggestion, the data we've gathered in this PMA is already in the database. Uh, you could create a query and show up to the data level uh, with, with each of those lines. Uh, I'm sorry, your, your screen blanked out. Can, can you show it again? Each and every of the lines, the data that's going over those lines is actually in the database and it can be pulled up easily through, uh, uh, well, a query. We, we can't show it on the spot because the code is, is, is uh, well, in development mode and he has to do stuff on the command line. But typically we envision you would just touch a line and you would see what data is on there but in terms of what types of measures you would actually apply to those data fields uh, that will be f steps further down the PIMRIM analysis. But certainly, we're thinking about in terms of implementing this. Yes, exactly, but the first step is, um, um, let me say, an analysis, yeah? But uh, later, you, you have to, to, to justify a potential implementation. This for it's, it's, it's a really, a, a, let me say, a norm. Uh, to get a little bit of an impression on how complex it is and what you need later to get this run. Right. Uh, on the consent statement itself, yeah. in this simple example, is it dynamically constructed dependent on which council you could end up going to? Does, does it depend on information hosting? Or? Um, no. Oh, you mean in in application? Yeah. Uh, the consent statement is it is it dynamic when it's built in, in real time? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's an implementation choice that has to be made. But when you look at this application, uh, uh, for for every every council is different, uh, so the the, the implementation w would be dynamic for 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 this thing. But it is to, it's to decide for the, uh, uh, the 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 business owner. Yeah, and, and to add to that, I think the legal text that should actually, or what is actually displayed in terms of giving consent, I don't think this is one tick box. It will be multiple tick boxes in order to get consent for this landscape. Uh, but you could uh, try to figure out what types of consent a, a, a lawyer would craft in terms of words um, uh, based on all the information going down the streams. The tool doesn't produce these consent statements by, uh, by itself. Uh, that, that would be a cool feature, by the way. But. Even in this application where you're being a good citizen, you may be presented with so much stuff that just stops you. I, I'm, in all honesty, and but maybe Mike can say a few words about this, uh, uh, maybe have more insights in, in this, uh, in terms of uh, what will the consent statements look like? Because uh, the GDPR says uh, they can't be bundled, they need to be specific, they need to be in a clear language, uh, but, but I have no um, sense of what that will look like. Uh, I could go to a website and be presented with this massive list of, of consent statements I need to each uh, and every tick them before I get this service. That would probably, um, well, at, at least at this point in time, if I go to a website and have to tick 10 boxes to get something, I would probably go like, well, never mind. Uh, I'll try to get it somewhere else. You could get a scenario where you only want to tick 8 boxes, and would the, the service then have to cope with the fact you only give it to 10 and you don't use another bit of the service? Yeah. yeah. So, so every every application uh, has to look at what the consent is given, and uh, the, the and s s if you look at uh, multiple personas, for example, uh, when someone has given uh, given consent in this application, uh, it goes through all these uh, things. It has to look at all the different f uh, things where consent for is given for, uh, to check if if it's possible. But but the same person can has given consent here and here but di different uh, uh, consents so you have to uh, yeah take that account in all these applications i have a question if i remove a consent yeah? so it's as well i had this discussion several times because if you give a consent to several different uh, information strikes and you remove one 
um, is then the track, what is the consequence if you uh, heard another content uh, chain? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, something... Yeah. Uh, something about this is that, well, potentially you have to do the, the, your other content again? We, we don't know. Uh, I think it's something that, that, that people have to figure out based on what their lawyer says and how your implementation looks. Yeah. But also, there's, I think there's the notion of withdrawing consent, but at a later point in time you could say again, ah, well, uh, I'll, I'm giving consent again for the next interactions. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure how this is implemented in software. These are the hard questions we need to think about. Yeah. But, but the, the visualization brings up the point, so you can talk to it with, uh, with the legal guys. You can say, well, hey, uh, Mr. Legal Guy, uh, we've got all these uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, well, think about those kind of things. But, but I, I think this already proves that the tool is quite valuable because we're having this detailed discussion about this use case based on the diagram we're showing here now, which is quite interesting, I must confess. Can you envision <coughs> for this tool the inputs may be coming automatically from I can think of a dozen different systems. I don't know exactly what the inputs need to be here, but you know, there's all sorts of source code control and development systems that you use to track how you're building your application that would have different levels of awareness of all the necessary information. Could you imagine somehow importing all of that or hooking it up at an API level? Yeah, just. Uh, um there has to be some intelligence in those importers, and, and uh, yeah, uh, I haven't think about uh, these kind of things yet. But uh, that's also, I think, uh, one of the things. Uh, if there are companies who, uh, who can say small things about that and want to join this project, uh, last slide is uh, the tool roadmap. Um, yeah, th th there is a lot of thinking and work to be done at uh, the, the part to. Uh, uh, no, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> uh, the part to uh, uh, enter all the data, uh, how can you uh, relate, uh, uh, lay on relations uh, uh, between the elements. Uh, yeah, as an engineer, it's easier to edit graphs and make queries on it, but uh, a, a, a policy uh, person or a legal guy, uh, uh, well, you, you don't want to uh, give them a lecture first about graphs and uh, how you can use command line to uh, to, to do those things. So that's, uh, that's work to be done. Uh, we have to think about uh, the API layer, um, uh, what kind of uh, 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 queries you want to do on it, and what kind of services you want uh, to do on it. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done on the visualiz visualization engine, um, because what you want to do is uh, click through uh, uh, on the nodes, and that it zooms in, zooms out, and you can, can select what kind of things you want to see uh, at the PA, PA level, uh, detail levels. So that's also a lot of work to do. And uh, yeah, uh, start brainstorming on import export options, and uh, maybe if there are some smart uh, uh, things to, to, uh, to do in software so that it can classify automatically uh, what kind of PA it is and on which systems it, it works so that it can fill up the graphs uh, in the system. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you, CJ. I think we had quite a few questions already. As, as you can see, this, these are early developments on the PIMRIM PMA tool where we have looked at visualization at first because that actually starts off the discussion. And it was actually cool to show. Uh, we're, we're still very much thinking about the entry part and the analysis part and taking uh, or implementing the other steps of the PIMRIM into this tool because uh, you actually want to see measures mapped on those maps or get overviews of measures you've actually implemented in order to uh, uh, set aside the, the, the regulatory and compliance uh, policies. Uh, so those are the things we will be thinking about. Um, in order to, to get the data into the system, I handed my stack of paper to CJ and I told him, uh, you do whatever you need to do because we don't have a user interface yet. So uh, I think he worked on defining graphs with all the metadata attributes and stuff for one day. And then he was able to produce these images quite quickly because I asked him, can you show the domains in the actors? And he did, sure. Poof, and there was a picture. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and that, that's the thing you want to see come out of this tool. Uh, so uh, we very much invite everybody to, to at, at, at least have a, have a look at our uh, web page and uh, maybe um, if you have good ideas or would like to participate in this effort, uh, uh, you're very much uh, welcome to.
As a whole, I think this wraps up the tool discussion. Um, there, there's about five minutes left uh, for this morning. Any other questions on the full workshop uh, we had this morning you would like to ask uh, uh, any of the speakers uh, or um, any points you would like to bring up for discussion? All ready for lunch, right? Oh, oh there, there we go. No, no, go ahead. I think about this integration thought. You, know, you mentioned there have to be intelligence I actually often find that a lot of time that boils down to taxonomy, right? It's really not intelligence, it's translating what I think this thing is called into what you think this is called. And if we've done different orders of magnitude of groupings, then breaking them apart or grouping them appropriately and doing all that. Is there any work Oasis or anyone's doing to establish a general privacy taxonomy that would eliminate? Certainly there's, we throw out about a thousand different standards. So I'm glad that you asked the question because when you look at the work of standardization, big data, IoT, uh, smart cities, they always start with the taxonomy because they need to understand each other. Then we need to connect privacy and the taxonomy must somehow relate to their taxonomies because you work another language, they don't understand each other. So this is a big issue. And I have, to, frankly, to say, everyone is working on it, but we haven't found a way so that they will converge, and hopefully we'll find a way to converge. If we find, if the tool helps on that, then we win, okay? So taxonomy is key in the tool, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Thank you. Good one. Thank you very much.